Welcome to the Bruce Williams channel. I'd like to talk about what was the most interesting watch experience that I've had to date, and that was visiting RGM Watches in Mount Joy, Pennsylvania earlier this year in September of 2022. And it was cool for a couple reasons. One, obviously, I'm just a watch nerd. I'm a watch obsessive. And so just to see behind the scenes of, of a watch brand and not just a brand that buys cases and dials and assembles everything and puts their logo on a rotor and puts it on a website, ships it out. Nothing like that. This is vertical integration where I saw watchmakers that were hand finishing components. Someone was on a heat plate, thermally blooming components. Someone else was working on, uh, you know, on the computer for the CNC machining. There was a case being produced. I saw the raw materials uh, of a movement that went, you know, in different stages of readiness. So I saw the process. And it was almost visceral. Like I, I smelled the smells down there in the in the CNC machining room, and obviously, you know, I heard some of the machines being operated, the the ventilation going on in the building. It was a, uh, it was almost visceral. It was really, really fun, and it was unique because Roland Murphy of RGM. He took the time, he spent two hours with me, took me through the facility, myself as well as my friend Brad of Brent Miller Jewelers. He took two watch vans through his facility and I watched great watches being produced at a high level, enamel dials, thermally blued elements, in-house movements. I handled a tourbillon. I've never handled a tourbillon before. I've seen them, right? I've seen them in Las Vegas, but I've never felt comfortable in saying, hey, yeah, let me try on that tourbillon, right? You know? I'm not a buyer for a tourbillon, but I got to film the one, the in-house one at, uh, at RGM and Roland Murphy himself. He presented the watches that they create. Uh, he also showed us some of his own personal collection that he houses in the vault of the facility that used to be a bank about a hundred years ago, I think was uh, the date of construction of this old building in small town USA in Mount Joy, Pennsylvania. So Again, it wasn't just seeing behind the scenes. It was seeing behind the scenes of something really special, of high-end watchmaking being done proper here in the country that I reside in. So uh, the United States does have some really fascinating horological history, but we have not been a major player on the scene for a long time. But, you know, with RGM, we do have some significant clout as a country with this brand. And I take a small tangential degree of pride in that as a citizen of the United States. So again, it was a fascinating experience. It was the most interesting experience, watch-related experience that I've had. And I'd like to share a few highlights here in this video and talk about how it's changed my viewpoint on uh, collecting or rotating through watches and whether or not I will ever have a quote-unquote keeper watch. So uh, let's see. Let, let me. Uh, the things that stood out to me the most. One comes down to my background. Uh, I went to architecture school, so I'm versed in 3D software. And I, I, for my normal job, I do rendering. So I work with 3D software from Autodesk. And I noticed in the computer room, <laughs> they have Autodesk software. And so I saw... Uh, you know, I saw the movement and then I saw this, this basically this computer that talks with the CNC machine and I watched this, this uh, component be machined out. So that was fun, but it's not just that. There was a microscope in this room so that RGM or the technicians there can look on such a minute level at the accuracy of the machining and get everything dialed in perfectly. I was impressed from a technical uh, point of view, a technical stance at just how fine tuned uh, that creation process is. So I thought that was really interesting. The other thing that I thought was fascinating was watching the heat plate. Apparently there are a few different ways to blue elements uh, but they were using a heat plate. So I watched a craftsman at work doing that. And I also found it fascinating that some of the machines that are used at RGM, they're not like, uh, how would I say, modern machines. They're, uh, they're so well constructed. In some cases, they're 60, 70 years old. I, I saw purling machines and striping machines that are used to create guilloche work on dials. 
And uh, I don't know, guys, I, I hope I'm not nerding out too much. I am a watch enthusiast at heart, uh, but it was just very special, very real. And, you know, something that I will likely not have um, these types of experience very often. And as I was going through this building and asking Roland questions and whatnot, I had the thought, and I hope this doesn't sound too silly, but it was almost like if I lived in a different era, let's say I lived in Switzerland and I visited Breitling and I got to talk to Willie Breitling and he took me through his facility personally and allowed me to photograph his personal watch collection or the, uh, the, the watches that he sells I got to uh, ask him questions and whatnot. It was that type of experience, but I was having it for real here in 2022 with Roland Murphy of RGM in the country that I reside. So again, very interesting, fascinating, and I really enjoyed it. Now let me show you a couple watches. One is an in-house tourbillon that you can view through obviously the dial side, through the crystal, you can view it through the reverse of the watch, through the case back, and now you can see it through the side of the case. There's a curved crystal. And so you look at the tourbillon from three different perspectives, and I really like that. Again, I've never handled a tourbillon before <laughs> until this point, and it was very loud. I did notice that. And this particular version is not finished to the same degree as the production models are. This one was a prototype of sorts that uh, RGM created as they were dialing in everything and getting everything tooled and ready for production. So it has uh, almost an unfinished appearance in elements that I think actually makes it look, I don't know, I don't want to say cooler than the production version, but just very different and very beautiful. So I liked that. The other thing that I really liked was a skeletonized dial and movement that had a unique way of displaying the seconds. So essentially there was a, a, a tri spoke that had different lengths to each one of the members uh, and they corresponded to different indexing for the, for the seconds. So at any given time, you could read the exact second, but you were reading it off of one of three small hand members. So that was pretty awesome to see. But here's my favorite watch. It's not one of the in-house movements. It is different, and uh, this is what I really identified with, and it's called the 222. Now, some of you, again, are familiar with RGM. You probably know exactly which watch I'm going to share, but what they do with this one, what Roland does with this one, is he sources a vintage size 10 Hamilton pocket watch movement, and he disassembles it. He goes through every component, and he will polish elements. He'll get it very well dialed in. If he needs to replace a hairspring or mainspring with a modern material, he'll do that. But basically, he breathes life back into a vintage Hamilton pocket watch movement that was originally produced just a few miles away in Lancaster, you know, Pennsylvania, the birthplace of Hamilton. And he takes that movement and gives it new life into another made in the United States watch that is beautifully crafted. And I just loved that. So if you look at the movement, you'll see beautiful finishing. You'll see <laughs> uh, a stainless steel friction staff, which I think is, is very unique. And you'll see USA, you'll see Hamilton, you'll see that, that region tied in with the movement. And then obviously, if you look at the dial side, you will also see Pennsylvania on that enamel dial and then you'll notice the thermally blued hands that are done in-house again in the facility in Mount Joy. And I really like the design. I like the off-axis design, the classic components, the onion-style crown. I think this is a very beautiful, distinctive watch that has a great movement that is, you know, decades and decades old but brought back to life by Roland Murphy. I think that's fascinating. And so something that cool that I could potentially add to my watch collection and remember my tour through the facility and that one-on-one -on -one time that Brad and I had with Roland, it becomes a special watch and not a watch that I would want to flip. Like, you know, I like to try watches and enjoy them and then mercilessly flip them and add other awesome watches to the rotation. This is different. This is special. This should not be in that type of situation to where, oh, yeah, I'm just going to try it and then move on. No, this, this you take pride in. This is a permanent member of a watch collection, 
in my opinion, if you appreciate high-level watchmaking and you have that experience in talking one-on-one with Roland and seeing the production of uh, you know of the watch in Pennsylvania in the United States, it is super cool. So uh, it's kind of changed my view a little bit on flipping watches or having permanent members of the collection that you want to keep forever and pass down to posterity because they're so unique, they're so different, and there's significant meaning behind these types of purchases. So I would like to add a 222 to my collection, and uh, I'll look forward to doing it. So guys, reach out with any questions you may have about RGM. I will place links to their social media to their website in the description of the video. And stay tuned for other content that I filmed in Pennsylvania that will be dropping over the next couple weeks. So uh, thank you for watching. Have a great day. I'll see you guys next time.